long time no see or talk sorry that's my cat in the background in september i went ahead and went to a OBGYN. she says that she would go ahead and diagnose me with infertility because i'm 25 my husband is 26 and we've been trying for almost an entire year with nothing that triggered her to go ahead and get blood tests for me a pelvic exam and then my husband had a semen analysis the results were not what i wanted the blood work for me showed that i have a low ovarian reserve it's slightly low but because i'm 25 almost 26 she said that's concerning my cat just jumped on my back as i was leaning down <laughs> to grab my notes all right runa you're gonna knock this over oh not <laughs> stop it never should have taught her to jump on my back as a kitten anyways so i have his motility and morphology results those were the two things that were concerning motility was at 41 percent anything under 50 percent is considered irregular i guess so his was slightly low she said it's not extremely concerning but it, there's still some concerns and then his morphology was at 22%, which is low because anything under 30 is low. It said slight sperm aggregates are present. And that test was on 9-29-2022. It's been quite a bit since then. After we got the results back from the semen analysis, they went ahead and said that we need to have my husband go to a urologist. Results aren't extremely low or concerning. However, the concerning part is that he had six days abstinence before the results, so she expected them to be a lot higher than what they are. The problem with going to a urologist is my health insurance that we are under does not cover infertility. So I'm not sure if we send him to a urologist, which is considered like a male factor infertility doctor, for my understanding. There's not much they can do without insurance covering any of it. My pelvic exam completely came back normal. She was able to clear me of any cysts or polyps or anything concerning with my uterus. The thing that was not normal is my ovarian reserve is a little low. She told me those results and said that the next step that she wants me to do before she sends me to a fertility clinic and a fertility specialist is get an HSG test. I have to get my the actual test done at the hospital and my clinic had called me on cycle day four. I told them, so I was still on my period, and this test has to be done between days like seven through 10. They told me to call the hospital, the radiology department on cycle day one. And I said, well, since I'm on cycle day four, can I go ahead and call them and schedule it? And they said, hold on, let me go ask somebody. And then the lady came back and said, no, you just need to wait until cycle day one. I'm on cycle day like 20 or so. And the hospital actually called me a few days ago about scheduling it. They asked me what my last period was and I told them it was like 20 days ago. And they said, okay, when is your estimated start date? So I told them it was like the, I don't remember the date. It was like 17th, 18th, or 19th of November. They were like, okay, let's get you scheduled for, it was right around Thanksgiving. It's so like eight, nine, and 10 would be like 24th, 5th, and 6th. 26th is a Saturday, 25th is Black Friday, and 24th is Thanksgiving. They said, okay, let me put you on hold. I was on hold for like 15 minutes. And then they said, oh, actually all of our hospitals are closed. So you will have to wait till your next period to call us back unless you start way later or way earlier than you're projecting. Your cycles don't match up with years. So we are on our full 12 cycle period of trying to conceive. And also we're on the 12th month finally. Even though we, I didn't ovulate, I think until December, but we decided in November. And then I think we might've started trying in December of 2021. So next month is a full year and our 13th cycle of trying to conceive. I don't feel very confident moving forward. I heard in my 
OBGYN that I'm seeing has also told me that with an HSG test, it can clear out some debris and old, I don't know what it clears out to be honest, but if you have blockage in your fallopian tubes, I guess I didn't really even explain the HSG test. Basically they put a catheter inside of your cervix and balloon it up and then they spray iodine that goes through your uterus and out your fallopian tubes and you should be able to see like a pretty spray of iodine that goes through your body and it is x-rayed at the same time and you get immediate results and I have heard it's extremely painful and I've heard it's not that painful it's kind of like a mild period cramp it also depends on if you have blockage, I will make a video about my experience as long as my insurance covers it because it has to be under a specific code. It has to be diagnostic and not due to infertility. So crossing my fingers that it's covered. Moving forward, after the HSG test, my OBGYN will go over all of our results and then tell us what the options are. She said basically, moving forward, she's gonna probably just send me out to a fertility specialist. However, I can't afford a fertility specialist because my health insurance does not cover anything infertility related. IUI, IVF, there's no way. It's like $15,000, $12,000, $20,000 per treatment and my health insurance does not cover any of it. We'll be back to square one and we'll just keep trying. And then we'll look at other options. So if we get like six months down the line and I'm still not pregnant and there's no hope in sight, I think we'll sit down and have some discussion about doing foster care and possibly adoption, but that's just not where we're at right now. It's hard because I see a lot of people that are getting pregnant and having kids and I'm not. And it, it seems unfair and it doesn't make sense to me and I don't understand why. I really feel as if I was foreshadowing the fact that I was gonna have infertility struggles. And when I say that, it's because I, from the time I was like 18 to now, was really, really scared about infertility. And just in my heart knew something was wrong, that it would be hard for us to conceive. I don't know why, I don't. I don't get it, but I did. And I watched a lot of YouTube channels who struggled with infertility like Phil and Alex and Rochelle and Justin. That's where we're at right now. I don't know when the next update will be other than I will try to share my HSG experience if I can get it. If I can get it, I'm really hoping. But if not, that might be where the story ends. I have completely stopped filming any pregnancy tests, uh, ovulation testing, any of that, because I just know it's gonna be negative. It's disappointing and it's not fun to watch someone look at a negative test every month for an entire year. So figured people don't wanna see that. I don't wanna see that. <laughs> it's disappointing and sad and yeah, I don't know. Infertility is a really weird thing. I feel like I should be sadder or more upset, but I think I'm just numb to it. I feel bitter about people having kids who probably shouldn't, but they are, and I have to deal with that. I'm infertile, who knew? <laughs> Should have seen that one coming. Thank you guys so much for watching. May all your stars align, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.